I guess the reason I wanted to go to Haiti was when Caleb had come back from Haiti, he shared, and I just fell in love with his passion, his heart, and his desire to help Haiti. Um, the video really moved me, and I really saw a, a need in Haiti. Um, I love kids, and when we got there, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, but I fell in love with a little boy. His name was Mishle. He had the biggest smile, the biggest heart. He had absolutely nothing. And it was just amazing to see how they adapted to not having anything. And also, I, one of the reasons I wanted to go was to give them love and show them that there's hope and that we do love them and we can be there for them. But they taught me so much. Um, I do have a desire to go back to Haiti. There is so much to be done, even in the videos that we have done and the pictures that can't even put a a real picture on what is, what's in there. And uh, I hope to go back. Um, my biggest thing would be um, finding the financial needs to get back as many of us struggled the first time. But um, I know God can provide and if you're looking to be part of Haiti. Don't let finances stop you from going because if it's truly a way to get there and it is your desire and passion, God will provide. Through the years, I've noticed in the news all the upheaval and corruption in Haiti. Then my son spent nine days there kind of put a face on the people for me. His passion for the people stirred me more. When the earthquake hit, I wanted to go right then and help, but I couldn't. And then when I heard our church was planning for a group to go, I knew I needed to go. But first I thought, I'm too old. I knew I didn't have enough money and so forth. But God kept prompting me to sign up and I did and he took care of the rest of it. One of the things that I experienced that was one of my most moving experiences was when Dan O'Deans took us up to the top of a mountain that overlooked a very populated valley. He had us sit, looking down on the valley. We saw thousands of little huts, and these were the little houses that the people lived in. And people were teeming around. We were quite a ways away, you couldn't really see the people. But he read Ezekiel 37, which is about the vision of dry bones. And in the vision, God asked, can these bones live? He told Ezekiel to prophesy to them, he did and they came to life. And likewise in Haiti, there's thousands upon thousands of people who are just dried up spiritually, just waiting to hear the Word of God. It's CPR 3's vision to win them for Christ. CPR 3 is so well accepted because it partners with the Haitian people and helps them physically, financially, and spiritually. I'd like to go back sometime. In the meantime, I can help support those that are going. I saw firsthand the need of the people, what CPR3 is doing, and the fruit it is bearing. God is prospering the work, and we should be supporting it. Um, I went to Haiti the first time because I'd never been on a missions trip and it was the first opportunity for me, for me really to 
um, get involved in something other than Momentum and our um, outreach day at Momentum. But I really fell in love with the country and the people there, but it was just so much to take in all at one time that after the week was done in Haiti the first time, I really wanted to get more hands-on and go deeper and meet the people more and spend more time there and the people and just getting to know everyone. And so I chose to do a three-week three -week internship and I didn't really realize what I was getting myself into until a week before when I was really starting to get nervous because I would be away from my parents and not really know how to handle it because I had never been away from them. But it turned out to be such a great learning experience and growing experience because I got to be a leader and lead teams and grow myself in my walk with God and see how people really are hurting more than we are here in the United States.